I want to start this meeting off to give it give some perspective. The quote that you see is from a senior official at Bethany Christian Services, which is a large resettlement agency in the United States. This is unlike any effort to resettle people who have been displaced from their homes to the US in modern history. And that is because of the emergency nature of the evacuations. And this next slide will give it some oops, um, additional context. So you've probably seen, I'm sure you've seen the news stories of people being evacuated. And uh, for a lot of you on this call, and I apologize and keep, I have to keep admitting people into the room, uh, this may be your first um, experience with uh, the resettlement process of refugees. And we're going to give a little bit of quick context. Uh, so NICE, National International Center for Empowerment, is one of two refugee resettlement agencies in Davidson County. The other is Catholic Charities. And between NICE and Catholic Charities, um, we are getting ready to welcome 290 people to Nashville. That's 140 people from uh, NICE. We like to call ourselves NICE. That's the acronym for National International Center for Empowerment. And 150 from Catholic Charities. And those numbers are subject uh, to increase. Now, normally, both agencies only see two types of clients, refugees and what's called special immigrant visas. You see those on the screen, refugees, SIVs. SIVs, special immigrant visa holders, are those people from Iraq and Afghanistan who worked as translators and interpreters uh, with the United States government. And those processes to become refugees or SIVs, they start abroad. Uh, they're, a, they're a long process, but when you, once you are in the United States, are approved for being a refugee or an SIV, um, and you are given, you know, are passed to a resettlement agency to do the work of resettlement and providing the wraparound services to get you on the path to self-sufficiency, what NICE and Catholic Charities do, um, you are automatically um, eligible for certain federal benefits. You're also immediately authorized for employment, which is usually the biggest barrier, right, to becoming self-sufficient. The one of the biggest reasons why this is such a challenging situation or requires so much community support, as you can see on the screen, our Afghan allies, uh, the large majority of them, are actually coming under a immigration status called humanitarian parole. And that is basically why that's being used is because of the emergency nature of the evacuation. That refugee process was not able to be implemented and currently, that humanitarian parole status does not allow for the federal benefits that normally come with being a, a refugee or an SIV. Now, there is some conversation in Congress for, um, for getting some of those benefits that refugee clients normally have to um, our Afghan allies who are coming under humanitarian parole status but we don't know when that will be or what that assistance will look like. So right now, what we currently know is they won't be eligible for those benefits. So why you're all here uh, is so we can let you know what we need. And there are basically three categories of support that we'll go over. One is we need donated items. Two, we need hands-on support, and three, we need financial support. Donated items, and we've got a, a lot of questions about people wanting to donate uh, home furnishings and furniture and food and clothing. And uh, we wanna let you know kind of what, what's going on with NICE in our process of receiving donations. So, we will need donations of culturally appropriate food, uh, clothing, home goods, and furniture, 
And we are working in conjunction with the Afghan and Muslim community to compile a list of uh, foods that are uh, the most appropriate to donate and specific needs for uh, the families coming from Afghanistan. We're going to follow up with an Amazon wish list li uh, link uh, for those items. We're also working with community groups to provide more food. But one of our biggest challenges and one of the biggest uh, needs for us is storage space. So both NICE and currently Catholic Charities, the other agency, are we basically exhausted our storage space. You know, it would be amazing if we had access to a huge warehouse, but we don't. So one of the things that we're actually going to ask from community groups um, who want to help is providing drop-off locations at their perhaps in a, a church gymnasium, uh, some other community center. And we are asking for volunteers who can help manage their drop-off sites. We basically want to have uh, per apartment a list of the home furnishings, the furniture, uh, the goods that we will deliver to um, to apartments when they get set up. One of our biggest needs. It's a logistical um, opportunity uh, for for success, and we're excited about that. So. Um, if you're interested in a community group, we'll talk about that afterwards. One of our biggest needs for sure. And what we are hoping will happen is we will have drop-off locations uh, across the city. We'll be able to provide a map on our website uh, with contact information from each community group. And we'll be able to coordinate with our team. So when we know a family is coming, we'll be able to coordinate getting everything from that drop-off location to the apartment before families uh, come so we can get it set up. And one of the major questions we've been getting is when are families arriving? So we anticipate the arrival of families starting in October and the first kind of wave of people um, to come in October, the end of the year and the 140 that uh, NICE is currently approved uh, to resettle that, that number we anticipate will come uh, through March. So a period of about uh, five months or so. And there may be more people coming. I'm sure you've seen news about that. And we'll do, we'll do questions uh, uh, at the end. I'm sure there's a lot of, a lot of questions. The other, the other need is, the second need is hands-on support. So, what happens normally with our clients is uh, we have, and any resettlement agency has caseworkers. So there are, there are things that need to get done, paperwork, uh, appointments. Uh, there's a checklist of services that are mandated uh, basically by our agreement with um, our headquarters who then works with the federal government. Those things happen in the first 90 days. So um, our caseworkers were and we're staffing up getting more caseworkers, but there's a lot of services that we need help from community groups. And why we're focused on community groups is, and I know a lot of individuals are on this call too, is we want people to come into a community and be supported by a community. And it's a lot more efficient uh, to be able to organize support services for groups rather than unaffiliated individuals. And we want individuals, we want to partner them with, with groups. It's, um, we want to kind of wrap our arms around uh, families coming in and provide that, that kind of breadth of support. And we've identified the main categories that we need of hands-on support. We need people to greet folks at the airport. We need people to help with apart initial apartment setup. We need help with transportation taking families to appointments, uh, help with school registration. We need, we have a process internally of cultural orientation to life in the United States and uh, to life in Nashville. We wanna work with community volunteers, to help train them to do cultural orientations that they can give to uh, Afghan families. And 
one of our other biggest needs is interpreters. So a lot of people coming in will speak little to no English. We are very much looking for people who can speak um, Dari and Pashto and Farsi, the languages that are spoken by Afghans. And what we will do is we will partner volunteer groups with interpreters. Uh, there's another service that we use um, if there's no one available, it's a phone, like a live language line, but as much as possible, we want interpreters to partner with groups. The next thing that we need um, is financial support. And that is, um, that is actually our biggest need right now. So because the majority of people coming will not be able to access currently all those federal benefits, SNAP, EBT, refugee cash assistance programs, refugee medical assistance programs. We, we are in need of money to give to uh, our clients to be able to pay for food and clothing and rent and utilities. Um, in addition to legal fees, you know, one of the biggest hurdles that there is in this process is currently that status of humanitarian parole is limited. It lasts two years and the people coming in will need to apply for a change in immigration status uh, to asylee, they have asylum. Uh, and all that is, uh, it's a expensive legal process. So we're looking for people who, who are immigration attorneys who can provide pro bono or reduced cost services but we have calculated that the average family of five will need $3,500 per month for the basic live needs. And it's not including the estimated value of in-kind donations of you know, donated home furnishings or food or clothing. Um, these are folks coming in who may not know anyone. They um, are not able to work right now because they, the humanitarian parole status does not allow for immediate work authorization. Um, unfortunately, there's a, a big backlog in the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service, the USCIS, to process work uh, authorizations. Now, they may speed that process up, but we've been told that it could take up to six months. So um, $3,500 a month per family of five, Obviously, it's a little bit more if it's a larger family with kids. That is what is needed, and that is, um, is one of our biggest needs for sure. <laughs> Housing, <laughs> another huge need. Uh, I'm sure, um, I'm sure all, all of you are familiar with the uh, issue in Nashville with uh, access to affordable housing for anyone. What we do uh, as a resettlement agency, because our clients are coming in with no work history uh, in the US, no credit. If you ever tried to rent an apartment, you know, they ask for uh, income that's three, three times uh, the, uh, the rent. And if everyone, everyone could uh, mute themselves, please. So we rely on apartments who want to rent to uh, refugees, but it's uh, it can be difficult. One thing we're looking for help with is trained volunteers, maybe one or two people per group who we can train to go out and talk to uh, landlords about the, the nuances of, um, of renting to refugee and humanitarian parolee families because there is a little bit more complicated because it doesn't go through their usual kind of mechanisms. We've also got a lot of requests from people who are interested in hosting families. Um, that's absolutely wonderful. We're working on getting guidelines. Um, if you're gonna be living in the same home as uh, one of our Afghan families, there's a process that we need to go through to make sure everything is um, everything looks good, uh, the paperwork's in order kind of thing. And then we also need access to 
you know, if someone has a, a rental property that they're not using, a private living quarters, we would love to talk with you about providing that uh, for our Afghan allies. And the last thing uh, I want to talk about is the relationship with uh, NICE, the National International Center for Empowerment. So our, all of our volunteers who, who work with our clients in a kind of hands-on manner, um, they, they go through our volunteer training and maybe need to do a background check. So um, that's just something that we do for everyone. Now, there, there are certain things like if you want to welcome a family into your home or do some kind of cultural activities together, watch a ball game, take them to places, it's a little bit different than that. But what we're going to do as an agency, because uh, the people coming in, 140 people or more who are our clients, ultimately there are um, responsibilities. So we're just going to have contact with your community group and their caseworker, uh, just so we can know what's going on with them. We absolutely want to encourage friendship and introduction to the community. Uh, we want people like in the video that we watched earlier to provide that, that warmth and that guidance as they navigate um, an entirely different country and um, coming from very traumatic circumstances as well. That kind of that love uh, is very much needed. And so we'll ask that someone from your group uh, serve as a liaison with NICE if you're providing that kind of hands-on support.